live. And I'm just waiting for Twitch to come back. Look at that. Get an audio check. All right, I'm good. Are you ready? Uh, two two seven. Okay. <clears throat> okay, ready? Yep. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two twenty seven of the Security Podcast here on In Thirty. Uh, today, we just right before Thanksgiving. I think I had a question that I keep on asking Tom: Why Firefox? Like. I've been using Chrome for so long, and I had Firefox way back when. I actually had Mozilla way back when, and then it turned into Firefox, and then Chrome came, and I said, why am I going to move? I moved to Chrome, and now I'm trying to move back to Firefox. I'm pretty much successful in it, but I guess I'm still Chrome curious, and I figured there are not significant differences, not like huge major differences, but there are some differences that people should be aware of. And I feel like we should take 30 minutes to discuss it. So I'm going to leave a lot of this up to Tom, but let's first say hi. I'm here. Hello, everyone. But I do want to add, I'm going to throw Tom a little bit of a curveball. We're also going to talk about a little bit about Brave and Safari and uh, okay. uh, the other Chromium browsers versus uh, Safari, which is not any, which is I think WebKit or BlinkKit or something like that, and mm-hmm. and the Firefox-based browsers because there are a few of those. So yep. So I'll let you start off. Firefox, Chrome. Why are you on what? If you're still on Internet Explorer or Edge, you should probably move. Edge isn't terrible, but it's it's bad. Um, don't be on well, Edge. Well, not well. I, I want to stick up for Edge just a little bit. I have Edge okay. on my uh, my my Lenovo laptop that uh, the work gave me, and it's not terrible. And I'm sure it's going to get better when it becomes the Chromium ver- the Chromium based Edge, but that's still in beta. So let's. I, I want to take the Chromium Edge out and just talk about Edge, and then your answer is right. Let's move off of it. Yeah. So uh, Firefox to give a little bit of a history lesson back in the day. Um, you had browser power struggles. Really, you had, it was Netscape Navigator versus Microsoft Internet Explorer, and they were fighting for the dominance of the web. Uh, you had some other smaller bit players in there, but really they kind of fell by the wayside. Netscape eventually became Mozilla, and Mozilla eventually became Firefox, and the rest is history. Um, but Firefox, the whole reason it got as popular as it did, and it was the number one browser for a time, is that it had tabbed browsing. Now imagine that. You hit a button, and now you don't have a million browser windows. You have one. I, I remember hitting Control-N all the time with Internet Explorer. Open a new window, go somewhere else. But now it's kind of the exception rather than the rule to open up a totally new browser window. I've got two open right now, but... It's kind of a rare occurrence for me. Usually I'm operating in one, but that was Firefox's magic. That's how it got on the map. Uh, And frankly, it was super cool. It was super cool. And it was all about power users and customization. And, you know, over the years, that part hasn't changed. Um, So Firefox, by default, totally fine. Your grandmother can use it. You can use it. Everyone can use it. Like from power users to people who don't know what the computer does or how it works. Firefox is perfect out of the box. You don't really need to customize it that much unless you want to add add-ons, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Well, so so the, the problem at that point with Firefox, and I didn't really notice it because I'm not a heavy tab user, was that there was the memory footprint, which still persists in both of these. Uh, basically, Firefox would take a significant amount of memory. Basically, if you had four gigs, you're using four gigs of memory just to do whatever it is, eight gigs, 16 gigs. And so Firefox just became slow and and it was it was always better than whatever Internet Explorer was at the time, but it was just slow. And then Chrome comes along and uh, Google says this is the fastest ever and you double click it and it just boom on working. And and they didn't start with add ons yet, but it was just so fast that you said, OK, I'm just going to do this. And. And again, people laugh, like, why is Google doing this? You have Firefox, it was dominant, that's it. Why, why do we need more? And slowly but surely, they got more people to use it. 
And uh, where we ended up today is that Chrome is now the dominant browser with a, a lion's share of the market. The vast majority of browsers out there on the internet are Chrome. Uh, with with Firefox in a not at all close second place. So we're hoping to turn the tides maybe one or two users at a time here on this show um, and, and tell you why maybe this is you should not look at an Firefox ad. again. I want to say this is not an ad for Firefox. Yeah. We're going to give you actually imperial. We're going to give you some facts, but this is not an ad to say you should use Firefox and drop Chrome. We're just going to give you, we're going to tell you what the differences are and you'll let you make up your mind. Yeah. So... Yeah. The the first and most obvious, uh, you know, I, I guess you could call it a benefit. It depends on your threat model, really, is that Firefox isn't made by Google, right? There's no vested interest to snarf up browsing data. Firefox doesn't make any business on, uh, you know, advertising or, or throwing uh, throwing your data to the highest bidder. Like they're they're a nonprofit, independent, uh, you know, tiny little organization and they make their money through various partnerships with other companies. Um, you know, to keep Google as the default search engine in Firefox, Google actually pays them a ton of money for that privilege. Uh, same with uh, with the iPhone for a very long time. Google used to pay Apple a ton of money just to keep Google as a default iPhone search option. Um, now, there's been some back and forth with that, and I believe the default is Bing, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but, you know, the, the fact remains that Google makes their money through advertising, through analyzing your, your browsing data, through watching where you go on the net and trying to build a profile of you to sell that profile to advertisers. Not really your personalized information, but, you know, saying uh, it's a male between this age range with these interests and this demographic with this kind of income. We want to target ads towards that group of people. Um, so... When we say Google is selling your data, it's not like they're packaging up your name and social security number. It's really just demographic information. So just to be clear on that, just to level it out. Um, Firefox doesn't do any of that. Google actually got in some pretty hot water earlier this year uh, when they said, hey, if you're using Chrome Sync uh, and your, your stuff isn't encrypted, you haven't used a sync passphrase, um, which we'll get into that here in a bit. Basically, if you just use the default sync options, which the browser does push you towards using the defaults without an encryption passphrase, um, your bookmarks, your history, um, you know where you're clicking in Chrome, basically everything you're doing, everything you synchronize is now being analyzed in Google and using to build an even better picture of you and of your demographic information. Google said at one point in time, we're not going to take your browsing history from Chrome and use it for advertisements. We're not going to do that. We this this is a bastion, right? This the Chrome data belongs to Chrome, and that's it. Uh, that's that's changed. Yeah. I mean, we said it on the show. I mean, years ago, we said, "Hey, uh, encrypt your Chrome browser with the with it. You can do it with a different passphrase." And and Google has said that they're not going to do it. And I guess I, I haven't checked on it in a while, but you're probably right. Now they're. I do. I still have a passphrase, but why have it different if they're not really going to do it? And so now we find out that they are. The the sync passphrase. If you do have it enabled, what that means is all of your data is encrypted and basically, you know, bundled and jumbled up into one package and shipped out to Chrome. When you synchronize new browser, it just pulls down the encrypted package and then your passphrase unlocks it. They they cannot. Well, they could, but they so far have stated that they are not using encrypted sync data for demographic and ad targeting purposes. Now, if it's unencrypted, which is default, they are 100% using that. So again, it's it's one of those, it's, it's the security in, in the browser to protect you, but yet on the backside, they're taking the data and they're sending it out. Whereas now Firefox, when I first started using it, didn't have the syncing across that now when I turned it back on and I, I saw, hey, they can do it. They even have two-factor on it. You can two-factor. I don't know. I mean, I do it because it takes one second, but I don't know why you want to two-factor your your browser data and everything else, but I guess whatever. So some people who are not using a dedicated password manager, Firefox has actually got one built in. And, and frankly, it's it's not bad. Um, you know, as far as browser password managers go, it's 
perfectly surface uh, serviceable um but you don't want to get that leaked so two factor on that not a bad idea i would absolutely recommend getting like a a purpose built password manager get get uh get one password get last pass get key pass get something right um but if you have to fall back and you don't want another application you could do worse than the built-in firefox browser password manager uh, you really could i mean I, I saw a news article yesterday today. Do not use the built-in password manager, mainly because of sync settings, because you are going to go to that public computer and you're not going to want to download it just to get your passwords. It's one of those, it's it's going to be locked to your whatever, to you, and if you're somewhere else, whatever it is. Whereas if you get LastPass, you could install it, then uninstall it, or go to the vault there. It's in the cloud, It, it all this other stuff. Not to say that the built-in is bad, it's just not the best option it's not the worst option but it's not the best yeah it it exists for a reason um but I, frankly i would not recommend using it um not for any like serious reason but just like you said it's it's a use case thing i think it's easier to use a dedicated manager um so firefox has taken a in the past couple of years a really hardline stance towards browser and ad tracking um, by default, uh, Firefox comes uh, configured in what's called a, um, I'm actually looking at it right now. They've got a nice big privacy section, uh, standard. So what standard does is it'll take social media trackers, cross-site tracking cookies, tracking in private windows, uh, crypto miners, and block those by default. That is, that is the bog standard. That's what you get out of the box with a Firefox uh, configuration. But you can set that to strict, and not only do you get all the stuff above, uh, but it also does uh, fingerprinter uh, tracking, which we've we've talked a little bit about canvas tracking. Um, it'll try to short circuit and break that, and it'll take an even more hardline stance towards trackers. Um, the reason why that's not the default is it actually causes some web pages to break. Some web pages are built in such a way that say, hey, Unless you're loading our trackers, unless you're letting us, you know, fingerprint your computer and get all the information we can about you through your browser, um, <clears throat> the site's just not going to work. So strict mode is not the default, but it's one click away. I currently have mine set to strict mode, and I very, very rarely run into issues. If you do, there's a toggle up in the address bar. You click it, and you hit, yeah, disable tracking or disable protections for the site, and it's done. The thing that, so mine is set to standard. Um, the thing I worry about is, so anything we talk about, I generally have to uh, beta test this on my on my parents and I need to make sure everything works 100% because I'm gonna forget that I set their tracking protection to strict or turned it off or whatever it is. So I wanna make sure that whatever I have, I'm good with, with telling them. And because the problem is that the strict uh, browser uh, browser restrictions cause weird problems. They're not easily diagnosable. You some, I mean, we we've all seen the. We've noticed you're running an ad blocker. Please turn it off to get us money. But that's not intuitive on what what's going on. One of somebody said, "Well, I want to run Piehole on my entire network," and I'm like, and I told them that's great, but you have to explain to everyone on your network that if something weird happens. It may not be the computer, it may not be the internet connection, it may be that pie hole that now you have to go and change different settings. So when we do the browser protection, I, I usually give that as a trade-off because it's really difficult to troubleshoot those little things. Yeah, and I it, running uh, PF blocker, which is basically the pie hole for PF Sense, um, I have absolutely run into web pages that just refuse to load because I'm blocking some weird DNS requests somewhere, and I've got to go whitelist things. I, I know Hulu in particular was <clears throat> super annoying to try to get working, trying to block all their stuff. Uh, eventually, I just had to whitelist a bunch of domains, and it doesn't feel good, but hey, I've got to watch Seinfeld somehow. It's coming to Netflix soon, by the way. The, um, I was going to say that website we shared in the WhatsApp group about uh, the different excuses on why your website was breached did, does not work on the DNS 1.1.1.1, which again, why isn't it working? I'm trying tracking protection. It's not HTTPS on purpose just to make it even that much funnier. And I can't figure it out. So I had to change the DNS. I changed the DNS. It magically works. 
So it's one of those things. The last thing you want is your kid not being able to see some sort of uh, so like some YouTube video that they want to see. And now you have to explain to them, oh, it's the DNS settings or it's tracking protection or something like that. So, yeah. So um, Google has, and we, we covered this a, a few months ago, um, they have taken kind of a, a weird stance towards add-ons. And in particular, the API is used by ad blocking add-ons. And it looks like they may actually kill um, one of the more popular uh, ad blocks, uh, ad block extensions, uBlock Origin, uh, on Chrome. Uh, because it, it heavily uses APIs that are extremely powerful now they're not doing it out of malice we don't believe um the public perception does uh, or the public uh i should say not pr spin but the public reasoning does check out it's true that an add-on with uBlock origins permissions could 100 percent run rampant steal all your data make stuff appear weird get you to accidentally send money through online banking to weird offshore accounts to some guy you've never met like there's there's a whole lot that browser add-ons can do with that kind of uh you know low level deep in the the application access but the downside is that when you get rid of that you get rid of the ability to do kind of the most basic level of ad blocking where you just prevent things from showing up on a page. Um, you can do content blocking, which is kind of what Safari does and the iPhone has now, but it's okay. It's not great. It's nowhere near great. And it's nowhere near as good as you block origin. Um, Firefox doesn't care. They, they, not that they don't care about the implications of the add on, uh, but that they understand that ad blocking is something that is core to their power users, that extensions are basically what made Firefox what it is. Uh, so when Firefox launched with extensions, when they said, hey, you can customize the browser and customize the web pages to operate the way you want to work. It was a breath of fresh air. So you could go to you could go to dig.com and have an extension that changes the site's theme to to a dark theme, so you don't like burn your eyeballs out when you're in your mother's basement at two in the morning, like I was. Like Firefox extensions literally change the world overnight, um, and Chrome is starting to remove those powers. Sure, Firefox has absolutely changed extensions. Like the old XPI model is is gone now. They're they're working on a, a different API model, but things like uBlock Origin and other ad blockers continue to function. Um, you know, will they function in the future for Chrome? Time will tell, but right now it doesn't really look good. Uh, I mean. Firefox was the gold standard with it. And then you got Chrome extensions and different, I don't remember what they were called, but the customizable features. I didn't like it because at some point the permission system was, we have to see everything you're doing for the clear reason that it had to do it. And, oh, user scripts, that's what it's called, or tamper scripts yep. or whatever it is. So you would do that and you would change different things like put dark mode on. But I always felt like I had to run it through some intermediary. So I always turned that off. The one thing I will say with the tracking protection is because the Firefox tracking protection for me is good enough on my phone, on my Android phone, I can put Firefox and I think even, yeah, even on the iPad, I can put Firefox and it does block a significant amount of content, whereas Chrome doesn't have mobile mobile um, extensions yet. So you have to see all the ads, which is... Unfor I don't mind seeing ads. I really don't. My ads are not bad. It's the pop-ups. It's the unders. It's the overs. It's the all the other stuff that bothers you. A simple ad here and there, fine, whatever. I'll look at it. It's not a big deal. So um, it's important to note that Firefox extensions work on Android. Um, so if you want the awesome power of uBlock Origin on your mobile browser, you can have it just install firefox mobile unfortunately for ios they do not work uh because literally every browser inside of ios is just reskin safari there uh -oh. is one web view package that is shared throughout every single browser even chrome there are no custom web view packages um mostly due to security reasons that don't really shake out but that's a whole nother show um but the, the fact is that you can't run uBlock Origin on iOS currently. Um, I hope that will change one day, but we'll let you know. Um, another thing that uh, Firefox does in regards to passwords is that if they know your login or your password or anything to a website, or you just go to a website, sometimes you'll get a pop-up that says, hey, um, 
just to let you know, not to freak you out or anything, uh, this website had a bunch of credentials breached like three months ago. So if you go over to this site, and the site is Have I Been Pwned, um, you'll figure out if there are other things you need to be concerned about. And it's it's this big like security push just on behalf of their users to say, hey, just so you don't reuse credentials, just so we can keep you safe, this website was compromised in this way on this date. Go here to learn more. Super, super powerful, especially if if your friends or family are not security minded, if they're reusing the same monkey one, two, three password across every website, they can see right there when when they go to like Bob's awesome shop or whatever that, hey, Bob got breached and he leaked all of his passwords. So you might want to change those. I mean, I see that. I look, I like that to say, hey, this website was involved in a breach, whatever it is, because LastPass is right there and I can change it on the fly if I don't know. The the problem is that I I get scared of pop-ups like that for my family members because then I get the call of, I got this really scary message that my information was compromised. I don't want that. I mean, you know what? I want those things to be sent to me and let me make the decision. So if you're going to pop up on my mom's phone about something, let me make, like, delegate that information to your IT professional type thing. I, I believe that is a feature flag that you can turn off. Yeah. Um, so speaking of feature flags, this leads directly into Firefox's customization. You can throw about colon config into that address bar. Click the scary, yes, I understand warning you can change just about everything on how this browser works. Just about anything is customizable and within your grasp. Do you want to turn off core security features like you know, CSP headers? Do you want to turn off you know, cross-origin uh, requests? Like, do, do you want to turn off cores? You can do that too. Do you want to make it so you can use um, you know, SSL version 2 that's been deprecated forever? Sure, why not? It's Firefox, man. You can do what you want. Now, the defaults out of the box are secure, and you shouldn't have to tamper with anything in here. But if you need to, if you are a more advanced user, if you want to tweak some power settings, get things to work the way you want, Firefox 100% supports that. Chrome has their about colon flags, is what I think it is, or Chrome colon flags. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nowhere, nowhere near the level of power that you get with Firefox's uh, configuration editor. It is just incredibly powerful. Uh, I actually wish that every single application had one of these. Now, I, does that, does that, tra I don't know if we know if that transfers uh, devices. So my laptop and my it computer. It does not. So you have to, to do my that. To my knowledge. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one of the preferences because I feel like that's something that could break things. If you don't, yeah. it, it even says, by the way, this, there's no warranty here, but you're breaking the warranty by doing about colon config. Yeah. So, and I actually had to use about colon config on a netbook of mine because the screen real estate was so tiny. I need to actually hide Firefox bars and get things to slim down even further than themes would allow me. So I went into about colon config just on that machine and made it so like by default, it was zoom, the web page was zoomed far out. It was hiding a bunch of like bars and stuff. It was super powerful, but I didn't necessarily want that replicated. It was just, you know, hacks that I had to use to make my netbook work better. And look what happens in that netbook. It's I know. Dead. Yep, it's it's just dead. Um, another powerful, powerful feature that Firefox has is called tab containers. Now, this is more of a power user feature. Your, you know, your family members are probably never going to use this, but I can open up a tab, and by default, I've got things like personal, banking, work, shopping. And what it does is Firefox in the background actually sets up different um, like isolation containers. They're not like true process sandboxes, but uh, it's, it's basically containers to hold the cookies, the logins, the session data, um, everything just in that container. So if you wanna have an isolated container just for online banking or an isolated container just for online shopping, you can do that. And the other tabs aren't going to interfere. Like you, they even have the ability to like isolate a website, like Facebook. If you want to be logged into Facebook in just this one isolated container, so it doesn't have to, so it doesn't spider itself out to the other websites you're viewing, you can do that with container tabs. And you can set up your own categories. They've got different colors, different menu icons. Uh, it's actually really helpful if you want to log into like multiple Facebook accounts or multiple Google accounts, which I have to do all the time. Um, that. Uh, not Facebook, but you know, 
Um, and let's say the site doesn't support multi-accounts, you could just open up different container tabs and they're all right there. They're all in your same browser and it works great. So Chrome has that, but it's a little different. So it's not exactly what you're describing, but it's you can do different people. And yeah, it's an entire browser profile. Yeah. This is still the same Firefox. It's yes. still your same profile. It's just literally the tab is color coded different. Because I know at work, uh, instead of switching users, and and I don't do this, but I know other people. Instead, for because we were using Chromebooks on the Windows desktop in the in the room, they would have two different profiles. They would make a Chrome profile for person A and B. Never log off and just don't. Here is the desktop, and here is your icon of Chrome. And I said, this is terrible. But they said it takes ten minutes to log off and log on. And in a 40 minute classroom, that's a quarter of the time just waiting. So I understand what, why they did that. I just didn't like it, but if yeah. Chrome can do that, if you have different people, not like you said, tab containers. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't want to let Firefox off the hook here because they have done things that are, uh, in my opinion, stupid and shady, like right now. And apparently I haven't done it for this browser, but they've got an icon for pocket. Now pocket's not evil. It just lets you, you know, save links offline into a to read list. And it sometimes suggests articles from the web for you to read. I, I don't like the integration of my browser, but if I want to get rid of it, I'm going to right click, remove from address bar. It's gone. Um, they, they've also done things like a Mr. Robot promotional thing, which only affected some browsers that were involved in the um, like Firefox experiments program, I think it's what it's called. Uh, but that's, that's stupid. It's basically an advertisement. I get that it's nerdy and fun, but I don't need that stuff in my browser, right? Mozilla has absolutely made mistakes. Um, but when they get called out on them, generally they roll them back for the community or they offer uh, some kind of thing of, you know, we're not going to do this again, or here's what we're changing to make sure that this thing that made you mad won't happen again in the future. They have too many icons on the menu bar like pocket, and I don't know what they mean. And I'm not saying that if Chrome is the standard, we should work with the Googlers and try to figure out. Is it a green lock? Is it a secure? Is it a gray lock? What, but keep it standard because it used to be look for the green lock. Now there's no more There's no more green lock. Google says secure, not secure. But uh, I have one, two, three on the left side. I have a shield for what we found as tracking protection and then a, a black lock. And then, it, oh, it's obviously autoplay is blocked. So that's a different thing. And I don't know what these mean. And they unfortunately change. So I really wish that the, the whoever it is, the consortium would get together and try and solve this problem so we understand what secure sites are. Yeah, that's it's really unfortunate. Um, I it, We might get there one day where we just block all HTTP sites by default unless you click through a really scary warning screen. And then we can assume everything else is, is HTTPS, but I, I agree. It's going to be different. It's definitely going to be a change. Um, one, one thing that Google did with their, their Google logins is that Chrome logins wasn't necessarily tied to Google account logins on the web. Um, so you could be logged into a completely different profile than your Gmail page was on, for instance. They actually broke that. Um, so now when you log into Google, uh, it logs in your Chrome browser to the same thing and starts doing stuff. Like it ties that browser to your profile. Uh, now, if you sign out, it can take that away. But what was happening is that accounts that people had never meant to lock to a browser identity that had never meant to you know log them into a a random computer was now being logged in to this desktop application that sometimes the people didn't have any control over whatsoever that's really shady what's shadier is that when people tried to clear cookies to get this thing to go away it didn't it actually isolated Google's cookies specifically and said, we're going to clear all your cookies, but we're going to keep these few back just for us. That's, that's shady. That's really shady. And no one likes it. No one appreciated it. And they, they have made some minor changes to try to alleviate that. But uh, frankly, they already burned their goodwill there. And then we have a few, we have just a couple of minutes left. Um, my one big gripe with Firefox and all of this is, is, it's not, and I can tell, it's not as fast as Chrome. But like I said, I'm, I'm willing to give those trade-offs. And 
after, I don't know, three, four months of really trying to use it, I'm finding myself more and more going to Firefox. On mobile, it was very simple. So my mobile phone has Firefox. And I try to use Chrome just for the Google properties. So if I'm doing my Gmail, it's obviously easier in Gmail. Same with Sheets. If I'm doing a Google-specific thing, I'll generally do that. But the rest, I think, I'm pretty much Firefox. And yes, I'm on a Mac and I should be using Safari, but I'm not there yet with Safari. It is too much of a change for me. So Firefox it is. Safari, and this is this is a totally different show. Safari is kind of the default browser that you use to install other browsers, but it's slightly better than Internet Explorer, so people stay with it for way longer than they should. Look, if you have a Mac and you're on a laptop battery, that was one of the things. Chrome, and I don't know if Firefox on yep, a Mac, same it, problem. Bur it burns battery, and we're just not talking a little bit. It decimates it. It so, just kills it. So if you're just regular, if you're just browsing and battery is an issue, maybe you you fire up Safari. Look, I know a lot of people who love Safari. Don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not bad at all. It's just a completely different mindset that I think most power users are not going to be a fan of. If you're just casually browsing, it's excellent. I mean, that's fine. But if you're trying to do anything else, it's not. I Look, personally, I don't like it. I, I don't use it. And I understand the battery trade-offs, but I, I just can't get behind it. Yeah, same. So, so all right, I think we're, I mean, we're over time and I think we're done. So yeah, um, if you have any questions about Firefox, about uh, anything security related, if you want to yell at us and tell us we're wrong and we got this thing totally off base, uh, join our WhatsApp group, yell at us in there. Absolutely. We've been, it's been a little quiet in there, so I, I kind of would like more. But again, this this wasn't meant to be an ad for Firefox, but it's one of those things, hey, look, if you haven't looked at Firefox in the last few years, take another look at it. Give it an old college try because it does do a lot of privacy protections that, that Google doesn't necessarily do. You know, they're both trying to keep you secure, but at least your privacy data with Firefox being a, one a third party, they have no incentive to take it is trying to do better and if you can deal with it then maybe it's a good thing so yeah give it a shot okay, okay well we're gonna end and uh next week's thanksgiving so probably you won't see us so let's go the week after so we will see you then everyone have a good night see everyone bye Recorded audio was lost at the labeled locations. Oh, um, no. What is that? I think Let I'm me, okay. Uh...